Hi, indeed some people get double jackpot. This family found two owls in two different times close enough so they could bring it, uh, bring them both at the same time and order them at the same time. So anyway, it's going to be an interesting project. Um, these two great horned owls were in extremely good shape. One of them was actually better than the other one, but in terms of mountability, they were both good. And um, uh, one of them turned out to be even better than the other one, but they were, they were both in very good condition. Anyway, we are going to show you mounting process of the first one and for the second one we will just show you when it's mounted because it would be repeating the first basically process anyway and uh, we will put them side by side on the same branch and uh, pose them accordingly try to come up with interesting pose ideas and um, we'll finish them in the second video Okay, as you can see, I'm carving out the neck, trying to match the neck area where it's going to be attached to the skull um, in the perfect anatomically shape. So when I glue it down, it makes a smooth transition. Uh, these foams that I'm using for the neck, they're called backer rod. I buy them from construction, uh, my local construction store. Uh, I think they use them to push them into some gaps for create for creating insulation. The thicker ones I like more because I can carve them down to the shape I like. We can get the one inch thick or um, inch and a half or three quarter inch thick and use them, but then they're just going to be straight, and I don't like them. I like to get the thicker one so I can carve them down. Okay, here we got the neck ready and uh, the wire is already pushed into it and I'm trying to use my hot glue to attach it to the skull. Hot glue melts and fuses this foam into the plastic skull and works really good. Not so well when you're using an uh, the real skull. There, you don't have a flat, solid surface to glue the high, uh, neck into. You have to different. You have to use a different method. So, time to install the eyes. We got the eyes going on, and um, they're glued with some paper, uh, some glue to a piece of cardboard. We're gonna remove them, so we can have them basically um, attached to the clay much easier. Paper doesn't really get uh, pushed into the clay properly and uh, it doesn't create a good uh, seal so I like to remove the papers and push them into the clay <clears throat> take your measurements from front of the front of the eye to the back of the skull so you can um, apply it on the on the eye setting and you can do the you can do it properly and adjust it accordingly yeah when I when I'm installing the eyes I double check it from every different angle from below from behind from the sides make sure that it's uh, it's basically installed perfectly or as best as I can and to answer the question that why do I use artificial skull this is the most important answer that I can have for you because I can install my eyes freely without having any skin attached to it even when I'm using the real skull which in some occasions I have and I will again uh, especially if the clients is asking for it uh, I still remove the skull totally so I can adjust my eyes just like this Having that skin hanging in front of it is just not fun and it just doesn't help me at all. I don't like it. I have to push it to the corner or this just push it push push the skin into the center so it's not blocking my view. So anyway, this is the biggest reason that I do it. And of course it's cleaner and faster. A little bit more cost to the to the work because you're using silicone and uh, casting material. But the end result is much better 
Okay, the skin is ready. It's all washed. We're trying to just dab dry it with some towels, make sure that there's not uh, much of uh, water trapped in there. And then we are going to insert the neck and install the eye. Oh, these are the paper towel that I pushed into the wing pockets, wing skin, so they absorb to absorb the excess moisture in there. Time to insert the uh, neck wire through the face opening or head opening, and then bringing the skin all around the beak, which you've seen it many times in my previous videos and we're going to use our crazy glue of course first we have to align the skin all around the place where they're going to be glued down and then we're going to use our crazy glue to glue them down the the interesting thing about crazy glue and i like to use gorilla glue the brand the interesting thing it, it works really good i know some people don't like them i don't know why but it has worked perfectly good for me um, the interesting thing about crazy glue is that it, it there is a reason they call it crazy because it glues anything and um, the, you might think that the skin is wet it's basically I call it damped right now because I have dab dried it pretty good so the feathers are all soaking wet right now and uh, very wet but the inside of the skin is not much different than when you blow dry the skin first and then mount it it's it's a little bit damp you can use some swabs and alcohol or a lacquer thinner just rub around the surface of the area that you want to glue down to make sure that you know excess moisture is gone or any any debris or grease that might be there is gone so your glue will will work really good okay so as you can see in some other videos I have shown this uh, from close uh, distance so it's zoomed in more but here it's not it's it's a real challenge for me when I'm trying to show you something in detail and I have to do it and I have to be the cameraman too at the same time so that's why most of the time my camera is on tripod doing its thing while I'm doing my work okay so we got the head installed and ready to go the wing wires are pushed into the uh, ulna a hole that we have created before that's all we need you don't necessarily need to push the wire all the way to the tip of the wing um, we used to do that a lot in i still do it once in a while when i, when I think it's needed but uh, most of the time we don't because uh, Pushing that wire through that last part of the wing will really disturb the feather alignment. Um, but when we don't, the, the wing bends 100% naturally and you're not having any uh, problem with feathers not lining up properly. So that's preferred this way. Again, I have created some drumstick uh, buildup, but unfortunately it's not shown in the video for i like i mean no it, it's it's not even filmed so it's not that i edited it out it's not even filmed so i don't know why i just i thought that maybe everyone knows about it but anyway in my newer videos you'll see all of that this video is at least four or maybe even longer than that five or six months old so this piece has left the shop long time ago the video was still on my computer and I'm trying to um, upload every older video that I have before I get into the new one. So as you can see, I'm using the electrical tape, taping up the leg wires into the, um, uh, to, to, uh, to the leg bones. That's the best and quickest and the strongest way to do it. I really, really like it. Goes right from behind the uh, heel, goes all the way down to the bottom of the feet. And make sure that when you're pushing that out of the feet, make sure you're, you keep your hands away from that area because you're gonna poke yourself and it really, really hurts. I've done it a few times when I'm not careful. So I um, haven't done it for a long time. Fingers crossed, I'm not gonna do it anymore because it can really hurt. You're pushing 
like that wire with all your power and all of a sudden comes out and bam into your skin so anyway we got the body all carved up make the real bend in the neck area so we can push it into the body you pull the wire out of the end of the body and bend it back and push it again inside the foam so I have a couple of videos showing how to carve these bodies so stay tuned they're gonna be edited and uploaded soon I have mentioned it in my other videos as well you see that I'm pushing the wing wires quickly into the body but they are always marked it's not that I'm guessing or anything I have marked the length and exactly where the wire needs to go through so all I have to do now when you see it in the video is just putting the wire on that spot and pushing them into the foam so moving around the wings a little bit to free up some skin that has been uh, caught in the in the work so it uh, allows me to have a little bit more freedom around the legs so I can push the leg wires in The bend that you see I'm doing on the leg wire is the femur or the thigh bone that I'm leaving there. Um, basically I'm counting that length in before I push my leg wire into the body. It is important to have that part freely moving around so it gives you the freedom of moving your body uh, you, your bird body and the bird legs into the proper position as you can see I can pull the leg out and push it all the way back in because because of the freedom of uh, um, basically space that we left or the length of wire that we left on the leg wires for for the thigh bone Okay, a piece of fine wire turned into a U-shape. Both ends are sharped, sharpened, and now we're pushing basically from underneath the tail coverts. Uh, we try to hit both ends of the tail and then push it into the body. That would be your tail support, of course, after all uh, said and done we will be injecting some caulking into that area just to create a very solid tail okay we're gonna go through a turbo fast sewing process here again and a turbo fast blow drying so we don't have to waste our time watching something monotonous and and uh, boring and after that we're going to start grooming and posing so we're coming to the end of this first segment I uh, hope you enjoyed it um, this the second part of this video will be showing you how to pose and uh, groom both birds on the same um, perch and base if you like the video please Hit that like button and subscribe for more videos support the channel so it keeps us excited to uh, provide more videos for you guys we're trying to make this as complete as possible for being uh, a free internet or whatever you want to call it a free online taxidermy school okay especially during these covid days okay stay safe and we'll see you in the next video thanks for watching